Well, when we talk about angels, we're talking about spirit beings, part of the spiritual world, as we've talked about God as spirit. And, uh, but God is also omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Now, he has created uh, angels, and Hebrews talks about an innumerable company of angels, um, and they were all created uh, perfect. Uh, Job says that when the foundations of the earth were set, that all the, uh, all the sons of God shouted for joy. So at the time of the founding of the earth, it appears that all the angels were together in, for the glory of God. Uh, these spirit beings were rejoicing in what God did. Same time, we also realize that sin entered the world. Uh, I like to think of when it says, um, darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God brooded upon the water. Something happened there. And I believe that was the fall of Satan. And when man is created, it's not too long after that creation that there's this uh, evil spirit being that takes on the form of a serpent who introduces mankind to sin and uh, the fall of humanity takes place at that time. So there's a spirit world of innumerable angels, uh, good and bad. Now, say how many, how many bad? Well, if the angels are innumerable, uh, and Revelation talks about the third of the stars being dragged down from heaven. If we assume about a third of the angels went with the devil in rebellion against God, then uh, you just divide innumerable by three, and then you can find out how many evil angels there are. But the point is, there's a spirit world beyond our eyesight that is inhabited by innumerable beings. Now, from what we can tell of the spirit world, our descriptions is uh, they are um, smarter than man. They are stronger than man. Uh, but they are not omnipotent. They are not omniscient. Uh, they are not omnipresent. Spirit beings obviously have a containment within their spirit existence that's different from God, who is spirit, who is everywhere, all powerful, and all knowing. So within this great spirit, God, he created spirit beings that beyond our sight, and yet we see has, have some interaction with us. We're actually not supposed to be seeking angelic interaction. We're warned a lot about the influence of evil spirits, but we're also not taught to seek contact with angels. Uh, but it does say in Hebrews that if you're hospitable, you might find yourself unaware of entertaining angels by surprise as Abraham did in the book of Genesis. So when we look at angelology, we find uh, they are not us. We don't become angels. Now, when we die, yes, our spirits go to be with God until the resurrection, but uh, that's not as a make us a spirit being in total. We are body, soul, and spirit. We have a spirit. When we die, our spirit goes to be with God. But uh, it's, in fact... In Acts and in Matthew, there's references that tend to indicate that they would call the departed spirit of person an angel in a temporary sense. Not the angels that were created originally, but the fact that it's a spiritual existence out of the body uh, that was angel. Also, very interestingly, in all these descriptions, people seem to be able to recognize. So even though our spirit departs the body, in the spirit world, it looks a lot like us. I mean, uh, the rich man identified Abraham and Lazarus very quickly in Luke 16. Uh, Samuel came up uh, uh, to see Saul and recognized very quickly. Uh, so uh, even though our spirits depart and don't have a bodily form temporarily awaiting resurrection, we still know who we are. We still can recognize who we are. Well, how, how does that work? Well, I guess... We'll have to talk about that. After we leave our bodies, let's get together and figure out how that works. But uh, even leaving our bodies is only temporary. Yes, we're absent from the body, present with the Lord, but we're awaiting the resurrection. For when Christ returns, the dead in Christ will rise first. 
Those that are alive at the time will be caught up together with them. They'll be changed, and as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, we'll all be resurrected into glorious bodies. So being without the body is only temporary, and it's a good thing, because the bodies we live in now are sinful. The body we're given then, no sin, all glory. So there's a reason for uh, dying being necessary. And one of those reasons being necessary is to open the door for us to receive a new body like Christ's glorious body. It's uh, the ultimate dying to sin and being risen to new life. So we'll cover a few more of these things as we go on.